All right, we are back. It is week four. And we are about to head into game. It is Immortals versus Evil Geniuses. But is it Immortals? Is it, uh, which, which Immortals is it? It is Immortals. It is a mix of Immortals, though. We have Soaz, Hotluck, Aka, Altec, and Gate. So a little bit of a mix here. We'll see what they can put onto the Rift. Soaz obviously coming down. Let's see what Altec and Kate can, they, Gate can do in the bot side of the map. Potluck there uh, coming in for last split into Academy from the coaching position into the jungle. Now on Immortals in their jungle position. We did see a bit of his play in the LCS. But as of right now, this team is going to be the one that forms the Academy squad here for Immortals in week four of the summer split. Evil Geniuses, Huni, Anda, Giyu, Deathly, and Matt. As expected as we get sorted out here, a nice line of scrimmage. Everybody's playing it safe. Just keeping themselves in order so nothing happens in the early game. So looking at what happened in picks and bans, Rumble, Aurelia, and Karma were kind of the first bans coming from Immortal. Immortals looking at Huni, looking at that mid lane. Obviously, Gyu's Aurelia. They don't want that to take over a game. You don't want Huni to be able to control objectives. Also have a strong laning phase on the Rumble. The playing a little differently. Maybe a little grass lately. Whatever he wants. Really mixing and matching. Evil Geniuses will start on the bottom side here. They were on a nice streak, beating Cloud9 Academy, Team Liquid Academy, and Dignitas Academy. But most recently, Evil Geniuses has lost to TSM. TSM Academy has been on a tear, so not a terrible loss to get. Evolved and Team have been going crazy, but EG definitely finding the good wins to get them to 4-3. and three. And as we talked about, Immortals running that Academy team here. They've had wins back and forth, not really stringing any together. So it's kind of uh, maybe a, a Friday game or a Thursday game is where they get their win, and then the second day, maybe they drop it. Who knows? Maybe it's the momentum, right? They build up on Friday, and they get the win on uh, Thursday. Or backwards, on Saturday or Sunday, right? So 3.4, 3.5, it takes up. We're all even here to start out. Pushing in from Hooney on the top side. He's got to be aggressive in the early game with this gangplank. Putting the parlays on. Obviously, Soaz is going to be able to get that Mace smack down to get some lane clear and keep him off his turret. Pool party Oriana as Aka goes for the water. This is where he feels safest. And he is going to be able to get away swimmingly on that one. Gets himself nicely back to mid to farm this out. Up in CS a bit as he was pushing there quickly so he can get back to the minions. Not losing too many. Oh, we saw that one die. Oh, well. It happens, right? Sweet little skin there. Pool Party skins most recently coming out as we did knock into summer. Was that June 20th? 21st? Something like that. It's always when you get out of school for summer. Great time. Great time indeed. But very aggressive lane from Deathly and Matt. If they can get an early dazzle on and they can just lock him down and continue that Ren walk down the lane. Uh-oh, 2v1 for Potluck. Like he could try to escape on the other side. Justice Punch dash forward isn't going to be enough for Giyu, but they are able to get it with a bit of Winds of War and Trundle bringing the club down. Nicely done there. They pick up first blood and that's going to go over to Onda. Feeling great on this Trundle now and he is going to be off and running. Now able to steal resources away from Potluck. He will not be too happy about that one. Womp womp. Ooh, he's going to leave one. So if Potluck goes bot side of the jungle, it's going to be even longer before a fresh wolf camp spawns. And of course he will. That's what Anda was planning on. And now he'll look to get that top scuttle crab. Nice job by EG to say, hey, we took out jungler. I need to get top. Push your lane. Get that scuttle crab for me. Beautifully played here. Put some vision down as well. Get some crowd control. Take that armor off. Mitigate the defenses. Gate. So close, but so far away. No one seals Spellbook here for the bot lanes. We saw that sometimes, but not as much now. The Guardian is really nice to be run here, especially with these two supports that we're using in Tarek and Tom Kench. And it's going to be Exhaust and Heal for respective summoners. Exhaust for Gate. Heal for Matt as Deathly can keep himself safe, dashing around and being that very nimble Callista with her passive. So now Soaz has a bit of a wave building here. Huni, obviously ahead in CS. You can see how much he has to clean up. Oh! The Justice Punch just missing, but does force the flash onto Aika. Aika, rather, getting a nice dodge there. But now he gets uh, a little more scared about how he can play the mid lane. 
hoping that he does not go down too soon. He is going to back off of that one, figuring the lane is reset. Both the mid laners will take a chance to do that. Is a 4v3 in the bot lane. How quick can Huni get here? Oh, it's actually going to be Gyu coming from the mid lane. Justice Punch just on the outside of Gate. The Devourer to save one. Grey Health comes up. Gate can take a few more. There's the red to drop him down. Deftly gets kill number two. And already it feels like we're in the mid game. It takes an entire lane to take down one of these champions with the abilities they have to deny a kill or stay alive. The exhaust goes down. The gray health after making sure to not pile on his crowd control in ways to stop him from going down. Gate was doing a great job there. You never want to, you know, just throw your gray health on and exhaust immediately. You're kind of understanding the damage that's coming in. Justice Punch was used. You're a bit out of Winds of War, so there's no damage over time really hitting you. It's just damage coming from auto attacks. And you're able to kind of suss out, hey, I need shield now, exhaust now, play it out. Nicely done there. Gate still goes down for all that hard work. And even if you play it right, it can still go wrong. We know that very well. 1,000 gold lead now for Evil Geniuses. They take a, a very big lead right in this early game. Now, 1,000 isn't a lot if you can't make that bigger, right? If IMT holds here... You can't really do too much with 1,000 gold. But that 1,000 is on Deathly, is on Anda. Gold that can move around in the beginning of the game. That's what matters. Let's we'll see if we can get Anda now to another lane. Getting a gank. A lot of crowd control mid. Remember that flash is down. They got another about three and a half minutes onto that one. As Huni has the wave in his favor, giving some safety towards the top side of the map. We see Anda now going towards that. And he'll say, yep, I can take this. Easily. Really nicely done here in the early game. Just the way that Onda's pathing, the way that the minion waves are flowing for him, if they do need to do anything, they're in position. Another minion wave pushing in for Huni is he may actually just be able to walk this one back with a few oranges in his pocket. Again, there's the repeat gank. This one should be the one that counts. Can the pillar come out just in time? No, it's not going to be there. It was already used, and Ike is able to get himself out. The cleanse is what he relied on that time. Now, two summoners down for Ika, but we can see Evil Geniuses working again, just that momentum around the map. Bot lane, Anda pushes into his jungle, make sure they get Scuttle, which is now uh, or gone away, and he's just going back towards the top side, trying for a gank on mid. Probably doesn't have to go top, since Huni's pushed, they can go back down to bottom, they can go for what is the blue buff for Giyu, and just kind of hold everything safe. They already have the first Infernal, which is great. So we're getting Ocean or Wind. Cloud or Wind. Wind Drake. Blowing much air. So Ocean or Cloud coming up here. And they actually don't put Onda to the bot side just right away. There's no need to get the blue buff to Giyu right away. Dragon's not up for another three minutes. So they stay top. The lane's double pushed here. As Soaz just isn't crushing it out right away. And... Lane being reset now gives Huni time to just kind of hang out here. Blast going over. They're going to see Soaz immediately trying to set up a little bit of a flank here on the side. There's just going to be barrels of fun as they make their way back to lane. And Onda having a great game now as Giyu comes to join him for a little bit of damage. Just missed the eye. <laughs> you got to open your eyes to hit her eyes. That's what we're saying. Wow. Look at all the wards, too, on that top side of the map for evil geniuses they are living evil and they are deploying plan a right now that's first second blood steal the buffs make sure potluck has a hell of a time and remember potluck even was kind of behind on the early game because his wolf camp was only taken to one small wolf he went then bottom side so he wasn't able to clear that full xp right you the, the whole point of getting to your camps as a jungler is one, to get XP, but as soon as you see it spawn, you want to take it down so it can respawn, so it can be more experienced, so you can keep that roll around the jungle going because the moment you're left knowing you don't have any camps up, you're kind of, you mistimed it or you're pathing wrong, you're waiting more time than you should and you're not ganking, that's when you get all discombobulated. You got to make sure you're on point. Right now, Ana is on point. Again, back towards the bottom side. Scuttle Crab's on time. He's going to be able to grab that as Potluck is just a second too late. Knows, though, so they have a little bit of vision. This is more than Potluck had before, so this is starting to be good. A pushed lane for Aka. That means maybe coming down to the bot could be an option, but they say no. Cleanse everything they have, the safety, the cosmic radiance. They can really get out of a big fight. There's safety on both sides to deny kills here, especially with a Galio. Imagine the Tom Kench on the side of, of EG. 
or even the other way around, swapping a few of these champions on either team. You know, a Galio with a Tom Kench is always great. Really well put together squads here that seems like they almost want to be using uh, a bit of each other's teams. So, now to the bot side of the map. We will see what they have for each other. Ooh, it's going to be a big gank. Altex going to be the first. He dashes, dashes, dashes the dazzle. Can't say it. Dashes the dazzle. And he's able to go down, though. Well, able to. He gets taken down. A few kills coming in here for Deathly. Very nicely done as Altex could not keep himself alive in that tongue twister of a fight. For myself. Uh, and 11 minutes on the clock here as they now start to take down turret number one. Get it down to two plates, and it's good. Two plates, you can clean your plate. Get it, one more. Got it. Boom, you love to see it. That was like perfect. That was the oddly satisfying plate take. Licked it clean. Mm. That's what you like to see. What? You calm down, Shelly. Just swinging around. All right. Charge. No eye. Oh. Just missed it on the eye. Is going to be able to go down. And that turret is prepped to be taken. Great job. That's what we needed from Potluck. Gets a kick in to probably get himself out safely. Flashes over the wall, and he's not going to get rendered into position. Gate still toying with them. Maybe they want a little bit of position on the Giyu in mid here. And it nicely, nicely done by Immortals. Potluck coming up big. Gets him the clout. It's going to be Ocean. Look at this Evil Geniuses team real quick. Trundle, Galio, Tarek. Love the ocean. You would never guess it. They look like they would sink right away, right? Yes, but they float very well. Very buoyant and healthy once ocean comes in for them. So ocean's still good for immortals. It's never bad for a team, but to be able to be evil geniuses, go in and out, out of these fights, you're going to be getting hit with uh, piercing arrows from all tech. Not necessarily a poke comp they have, more of a skirmish setup comp, but... Will you just deny that poke with health? It's great. It's fantastic. So they should be all right if they can get it. A big what if. That Ocean Drake is just as much Immortals as it is Evil Geniuses at this point in the game. And we're seeing Soaz get pretty big. We have to remember there are a bunch of tanks on the side of Evil Geniuses, but one of them is going to get denied. Someone is going to get denied during the fight from Soaz's ult. So still waiting to see that. And we haven't seen too much love towards the top side of the map either. If there was any jungle pressure, it was to think there may be a counter gank coming up. You know, if there would have been a lane gank coming through from either side. Three mid as that bot turret is down. Aitka now has his work cut out for him. That was about an eight minute rift, I believe. So it should be okay. Cool. So we said there wasn't much pressure up here yet, but now that the side lanes can be cleared and there's not much of a way for Soaz to hold that turret by himself, EG's going to try to push into the jungle here. Enda is just going to be a meat wall for the team. He'll get a little help from Matt, though, coming in. And we get a TP bot lane. Great control of the map. The macro is huge from EG right now. They let Alltech push all the way up to the turret, right? Making sure, he, wasting time getting minions and got a few shots on the turret. But if you teleport there while Altex half pushed down and you see Huni, he's already leaving the lane. He's already going to be the other side of the map here now, helping his team on the flank. He's going to have Ika's flank, but seen by minions, they may know and Immortals could have the upper hand already. Adjust his punch is going to allow a Blast Cone exit from Giyu. And it gets a little touch and go there for a moment. A quick bite from Anda allows him to take his big chicken. The Raptor down. But Immortals, they're not holding off. They're getting themselves up into these fights, not afraid, knowing Potluck can make some kick moves. A Shockwave could be pretty big here. Seraph's Embrace getting finished up now. Blade of the Rune King. So uh, may see a bit more objective taking on the plate for Immortals. Ooh, Fate's Call. Dazzle's just going to miss as well from the Blast Cone. A little bit of awkwardness. And Altec makes that happen as he does he does his way out of there. Nicely done. <laughs> Looking around, level 8 to level 8 for the junglers. And uh, we pointed it out earlier that, you know, Potluck was put back in his jungle. A few camps were taken. He was pushed around. 
He was a level behind for quite some time, but now he's been able to focus a bit and get himself a few more camps under his belt. Now up in CS. Steal number two. How much luck is in that pot? Mr. Potluck. How many people are going to be at this potluck? It looks like everybody is going to be participating from the side of Immortals. Bot lane so as is starting to back off as he does not have TP. And he wants him to make, or he wants to make EG think he does. A quick lick to stick on Onda. And there it is. Like I said, Immortals is not afraid. They are going to go in for these fights. And the moment that EG loses a bit of their vision, they do have vision at the blue buff, but that's not where the fight is. It was a round top, and it was coming um, from mid into that river. So it's like EG got caught off guard there. Nicely done. Boom. I wonder, just for Tom's sake, what licking Shelly would be like. Well, that's got to be some rough skin, right? It's it's supposed to be a scuttle crab that has been infected with like barren aura. Shelly, okay. I don't know. Now, I don't think it would be sweet or sour. I think it maybe a neutral. I'm guessing a neutral, neutral taste. So two kills coming up for Immortals here as we go off the deep end. Giyu's back on the attack. Rift Herald's up. Immortals doing a very nice job of being able to get this second one. Hopefully being able to crush the plates here at mid. No plates. Rather turret. Oh boy. Ultek has to flash. Potluck to him immediately to try to keep him safe. He is ready to get the Dragon's Kick into anybody that tried to get within melee range of Ultek. Look how close they're playing together. Awesome job by Immortals to just play complete protection for their constant DPS on the squad. Aka now trying to throw the ball around, seeing if he can get any dissonance damage to stick on the side of Evil Geniuses. No Athenes here to be healing. No innate healing coming from more people except for Huni eating oranges so as is in. Looks like he did steal Deathly, I believe. No, he took Giyu, one of the tanks out, trying to get the crowd control sussed out so they can't use it in the fight. Oh, and he has a four justice punch right there that he may want to go in, but the team has Drake. The first Ocean Drake, and that's going to be the soul of the game. They dive in, they grab in, and it's going to be Immortals not being able to grab the Drake. Onda comes up with that, and they have two objectives in their favor now. Great job by both teams. No fight will come with this as Immortals want to try to get a little bit of mid-priority, and that wave should be able to drop down the turret. So, overall, a little back and forth. Both teams giving each other respect, which is nice. Sometimes we like to see a little disrespect where you run in and just start crushing faces. But it's all right. The respect is good. Because then you get these measured approaches. The, the real engage where somebody actually has to find a way in past the, the front line. Or you take the front line and bait them into a bad fight once the front line is half HP. It, these fights can get very tricky. And it's definitely going to pressure each team into planning correctly. Not much fog of war coming into play in these fights as everybody's just looking at each other as they happen. Aiko now looking to push this top wave. And he, oh, all dissonance. I was wondering if he was going to let it push in. Crushes it. Scuttle in blue. Oh my god, they spawned at the same time. That was amazing. Shirelia's for Matt. This, so there's few items in an inventory that tell you exactly the way a team wants to play. Uh, and Shirelia's describes that. You can easily know that you are either going to be immediately kited or fighted, right? If if they come, if you're in that 5v5 fight again, and they Shirelia's, Giyu's in there. But if they don't like the ball moving forward or Soaz coming to take somebody into the Dark Realm, then you just go backwards. So seeing an item like that should give an idea of how uh, to Immortals of how EG wants to proceed playing. So now these 5v5 straight up fights may not work as good. You have to play a bit of the Fog of War. You have to have a way into the fight. It also helps for Altec to get his piercing arrows in. That would be beautiful. We've seen Potluck trying to get these fights in. Nice flash from Deathly, but he now may be caught out as Potluck is devoured up by Gate and saved. So as coming from the side. I say no more front 5v5 fights, but there's always a potluck kick involved. You can never take that out of the mix. 
That's the one you can see Lee Sin in front of you, and it still happens. 20 minutes on the clock. Baron's on there. On to the Rift. And two minutes for our next Ocean Drake. Two more for a soul on the side of Evil Geniuses. Three more for Immortals. As both teams sit at four and three here. And we could expect, I think, Immortals to have... Excuse me. A bit of a disjointed early game. I'm like yawning like a madman today. I don't know why. Uh, because of the changes. Because of the way that they have switched the team around trying to figure out what's working, what kind of styles play together. You know, if an aggressive lane is there with an aggressive jungler or vice versa, and defensive, defensive, uh, and playing for the mid game. And I think Immortals may have a better handle over the mid game than they did the early game, not necessarily the full handle over the game. But just the fighting aspect is, is something I believe that uh, we kind of remember more throughout games, right? You go through laning phase, you try to remind yourself, Gotta hit minions, gotta do this. But you're always kind of playing your way in the fighting phase. We know Soaz is a good fighter. We know Aka can dance around. All tech positioning in these fights. You get a bit more of a chance to express that skill in the fights. So let's see if it can come from that for Immortals. Since the early game wasn't there for all the communication, it seemed. Potluck was getting pushed around. The lanes were still trying to do what they could do so they could have this middle phase of the game for Immortals. And now Immortals are, are at a point where they were pushing fights 15 minutes in. Even after First Herald and, and, and a turret down on the side of Evil Geniuses. They did not fear the fights. So let's see if they can keep getting their kicks in. Chain of Corruption is huge. You can get an almost confirmed kick onto a member of EG with Chain of Corruption. Fate's Call Dazzle is a big play. Looking at the side of Evil Geniuses. It's a little telegraph. Once you get the Fates call out, you know the Dazzle's coming. Oh, they walk it in! Uh, talk about telegraphed. Shirelia's went off there. And that's where we saw a bit of the Shirelia's coming into play. Changing the way Immortals would think the fight will go. And there it is. A fight to the front tank. Oh, the Shockwave as well coming in from Aka. A huge play. And Dehu's not going to knock up anybody. That was just an ult for defense. So as is going into the death round, but it looks like he's going to come out and go down as well as the shield comes up and he tries to keep himself alive. He is getting a bit of healing back and that keeps him alive as he puts himself by the wall. Giyu forces himself in just a little too much, but they are going to be able to drop all tech on the other side. It's a 1v1 so far in this all alt brawl. Haymakers being thrown left and right. Great positioning. As I was saying, Soaz, such a good fighter. Drawing time from everybody on Evil Geniuses and it looked like he was going down. Places himself by the wall for a text book escape. Not even over yet. Cooney getting juggled on the other side. Going to be hard to take down a rent on that Drake. Soul point for Evil Geniuses, but they're going to have a fight with Soaz here as he comes back through. No ultimate for him, but he's still trying to throw it down with the shield as Matt stays alive. And Immortals may have overstepped here. Definitely trying to chase. One more rend would keep him in range, and that's going to be big distance damage. And definitely goes down as he steps too far forward. Potluck now on to one Onda and the junglers. 1v1, mano a mano. Huni, no, you can't do it. Parlay, as he says. Takes him down, making him walk the plank. The shockwave, the kill. What the hell is happening right now? Get you under the turret. They're going for broke. He's got to go down. The Zanyas is there. Just as punch back, but Altec, he cannot go down here. He will drop Giyu. And that is going to be the all-out brawl being done. 24 minutes on the clock. They were just waiting for a lit fuse the entire time, and the explosion has occurred. That was incredible. They were at the point of the game where the cooldowns were just perfect enough. First core items are finished for that to be happening, for the damage to have a lot of impact, but also see people that died at the beginning of the fight coming back up. I think we also saw how much of an impact Ocean Drake played in that fight. Seeing the HP bars of Evil Geniuses able to stay there sliver by sliver increasing on their health bars. Absolutely awesome fight right there. The batting order coming back around from the fountain. And now we got Gate and Altec being pushed around here. Ooh, the pillar. 
Maybe a little less misplaced, maybe just just out of range for getting it on the left side, because that would have been absolute death for both Alltech and Gate. Good save there by them to quickly scooch out of the way. Man, I want to see another one of those fights. Whew. We said it would come down to fighting. We said it would come down to getting each other in and out, figuring out how to deal with the tanks on the side of Evil Geniuses for Immortals. Being able to poke them down, set up the skirmish just a little bit, and then executing with the Shockwave. And again, the fight we just saw, the beginning of it. As I said, if you can't get to the back line, you do 50% to the front line tank. Potluck went right on to Onda. Pushed him down to about 60% HP, which then pushed him back into a shockwave that forced Giyu to pressure with his ultimate, right? So Potluck finding a way in there for Immortals, but the Ocean Drake really wreaking havoc on their ability to take down their opponents and Evil Geniuses. All right, Fate's Call goes out. Double Proto Belts as everybody's ready to fight this one out. Looking at Matt's HP bar as he goes Cosmic Radiance for the rest of the team. Immortals looking low. Gate still has a bit of that shield as we will take a quick break in this pause to get the team sorted out. Locked up so as still trying to get himself into a safe place of that death realm. And he, he will find turret. He will find his way back. And now just on to 27 minutes. The back and forth getting even better. And Immortals is finding a bit of their groove here. Out of that laning phase into the fight phase that they're more sure of. They're more confident of following each other into these engages very nicely. And I got to give credit to Potluck here. Just seeing the way he is staying on point with his objective of keeping all tech safe. Seeing where the danger could be for his damage dealers and instantly being able to take that out. Just really, really playing smart on the Lee Sin. And it's, it's very easy to get yourself in a bad position with the Lee Sin, right? You make one wrong kick, you make one wrong move, your safeguard's not up, and you're left out to dry. Especially against this EG team. Here's the Fog of War that they may be able to start using. Oh, gets the next one, though. And uh, was able to get his own chicken, but this time it's Potlucks. And now they're going to get Baron. What a control over the game here. Evil Geniuses had such a methodical, almost perfect movement around the map in the early game. Pushing out Potluck, taking his jungle, taking top scuttle, having bot lane pushed at the same time to take that scuttle as well, having top lane pushed to take the second blue buff when it comes up. And while not out, Immortals are definitely making moves. 
that they set up previously as they came throughout the game here. They have Baron. Let's see what kind of damage they can get. A great job by Evil Geniuses to take down mid to kind of take pressure off the map and get Global Gold. Here comes Cosmic Radiance along with the Dazzle. And how much can they razzle Dazzle Immortals on this one? Gate and Potluck very low, so as walking away. Well, in the realm, you can see him just on the outside edge right now. That's going to be the Zanyas for Giyu as the er, Trundle Pillar goes up to the left, giving Immortals a lot of movement in this fight. That Trundle Pillar may have been misused by Anda in that situation, just really leaving the floor clean for Immortals to push back and not allow the kite from Evil Geniuses now that the Shirelias is down. Immortals feeling comfortable with that amount of room and will say thank you very much for the Ocean Drake dessert. Nicely done. Impressive stuff by Immortals here to come out with uh, a switched up squad. I wouldn't say a brand new squad. It's new in itself, but all of these players are pretty in touch with how each other play. Just to those 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 seconds that matter, I think is where you see uh, the teams winning champions uh, championships have it perfected. Here, it's looking pretty good, right? We're only one game in with this squad. Championship on the horizon. No, I'm just kidding. As we come up on 30 minutes, 3-2 to two in Ocean Souls. Remember, a lot of what was plaguing Immortals in the early few skirmishes was the fact that EG did have those two Ocean Souls. Immortals wasn't able to push through. Now one of their own, but more core items to sustain a few front-end blows. And they're good to go. Man, definitely is is actually pretty big right now as a Callista. So if definitely gets any time alone, that that's gonna be scary. Chain of corruption may be just for him, to be honest. He already has the hex drinker, keeping himself safe. Cleanse is on half cooldown for him, so he will have it back up shortly. Seraph's embrace, long finished up for uh, Aka. Just saying, it's coming off a of cooldown now. At this point in the game, you can kind of rely on cooldowns to dictate your fights. Somebody's going to say, hey, Protobelt's not up, right? You want that extra damage. There's no reason to fight when it's down unless you're being forced into a pressured objective. Little things, right? Down towards Ocean Soul for EG. Immortals puts themselves even on objectives here. It was one Herald each. Turrets are three to five in favor of mortals. Just say five to three. Fates call, getting them a little closer. Oh my god, they got all tech. The devour is still there though. Gates waiting patiently to make EG pressure in a little bit more. Use abilities that are gonna get denied by the devour. Anda is basically able to take down Pollock himself and he baits him into a fight. Aka's shockwave just missed with Baron EG routed immortals. What a fight. What a stall. No side lane push. Nothing from Immortals. They wanted it mid. Two and a half minutes coming up for the Ocean Drake. That is going to be that sole point. What a back and forth. I mean, the Drake meant a lot. You keep them from sole point. But I don't know, maybe maybe teleport wasn't up at that time, or the setup for teleport on Soaz wasn't up. Because I feel like him pushing top lane that whole time would have prompted EG into more of a fight that Immortals may have been able to lock down. But everybody mid allowed Immortals to say sweet. Or I'm sorry, EG to say sweet, you have Baron. There's no way you can get even Baron minions past five of us, let alone deftly, right? They have great Baron clearing if it's in one wave. Two. You have Poonie and Deathly. Three, you start stretching it to the APs, and it doesn't get as good. Uh, but Ana still be able to clear, but you want him to fight. So if Immortals can get these waves crashing, tough stuff for EG to clean these waves up. I mean, same thing on the side of uh, e uh, Immortals as well. Altec's really the only one that's going to have a lot of hard clear if Baron minions are coming into the base. Lots of bounties. Lots of bounties. Pretty slow for everybody. This is a breather moment. They just say, okay, we're going to take a quick breath, get ourselves back to position. 
Top lane, a little less than even for Immortals. It is pushing towards them. Soaz now controlling the bottom side of the map with Teleport up. The map is objective free, so it's a great time to get down here with no Baron. You can get it. Oh, they pinged him. They, they said, what? Uh, Mord's bot? And then the next comment from somebody is, his teleport's got to be up. But they're still going to take the fight to Immortals. Wait a minute. EG is just going all out here. Gates going to be the first one. He has no chance to devour. Cannon Barrage comes down. Justice Punch goes in. They're going to be in the middle of the fight. As now, it is just definitely turning people into pin cushions. Ica trying to turn back with the dissonance. So as is huge. The healing's coming in. His shield's going to go on now. As definitely is trying to kite back. But it's not enough. The triple kill for Soaz, you gotta be kidding me. This looks like a fight for Immortals. Hooney's not gonna be able to do enough damage here. On is gonna get pressured out. Hooney's gotta walk the plank himself, and Immortals turn it around in the face of danger. Gate, Abyssal Voyage to the other side to get a route on Hooney to see where he could be, and they'll see him escaping. Ocean Drake for Immortals. I'm looking to set this up with my descriptions. And I'm just totally flabbergasted with the actual outcome. With the way the previous fight went, EG being able to hold off Immortals with the teleport, uh, or with nobody teleporting in, you thought that fight would go EG's as well. They came out, Gate was almost dead in the beginning. The rest of Immortals was doing everything in retaliation. That means you're acting on what your, your opponent is doing. It's second, it's not first. EG had all the moves there. So for Immortals, wow, to come out on top, that is huge. And they are looking great here, 34 minutes in. 2K gold lead up, and it's we could still have another back and forth fight. If Deathly is free, he gets to deal the damage. I think that's one of the big things. A lot of EG just dogpiled that fight. Uh, and rightfully so, right? You want to be in Cosmic Radiant Circle, but that's some damage from an Orianna. She wants you to be dancing together. She's the ballerina. She knows exactly what that's supposed to look like. Four minutes until Ocean Drake. That is the soul for both teams. Soaz is going to be aggressed on, and he's more than happy to take an early fight here. Taking Matt into the zone, and they're going to back off here onto Chasing. Still has Subjugate on. Waiting to see who he will use it on, and maybe if a stone plate's waiting to be used. Stone plate used, maybe Subjugate comes right after. Yes, it does. Now he's got a little bit more stats as he goes down. In size, I should say. And it's just a bit of a back and forth. I feel like this first fight is like active draft. Get everybody's actives, blow a few summoners, and then we got the real fight. Your knuckles are hurting already. You're a bit bruised, but you gotta go back in. You gotta go back in. There's no doubt about it. Here we are, going to Baron. Immortals are going to start. Oh, Ica, whoa. Okay, Ica doesn't get damage. You got to be careful. Baron reduces damage on the person it is closest to hitting. So, don't let that happen. Oh my gosh, they're burning it down right now. Gee is going to throw Winds of War over. Not doing too much damage, but it is enough to pull the team off. Immortals maybe should have just finished this. Ica's now going to be taking quite a bit of damage in the pit, but they don't want to fully give it up. He has left. Baron's still going to hit from bit of range. And again, still aggroed as they think they can walk back in to tempt the Baron HP bar. Really, they're just losing this fight, but Onda wants in to clear the vision as they make their way out. What a game of back and forth here from Evil Geniuses and Immortals. Now EG trying to take the inside track, and they get Soaz. Soaz always happy to take a fight, be the caboose. I think that's what they're allowing him to do to deter the fight because they don't want to blow other cooldowns on Soaz. But they get mid lane. Routing themselves in closer than Immortals. Evil Geniuses are able to grab something off the map and put it now equal to 5 and 5 in turrets and 6.2 thousand in gold. A few bounties to be picked up. 600 worth from Aka and Soaz, both 300 gold bounties. Cooney, 1, 0, and 7 with a 200 gold bounty. And everybody that farms cresting 300 CS now. Dazzle on the gate. He's more than happy to take that. Potluck kicks one back. Oh my god, that's definitely... Can he get safe? Is the Devourer going to be there? His Cognitive Radiance comes down. A nice little thumbs up from the Silas emote from Giyu as he tries to get the team saved and they drop Potluck. So, for his troubles of diving in, Potluck gets taken out. So 
pushing down the mid lane. Immortals isn't going to be able to follow that one for too long. Pressure would be amazing here if they can get maybe a... No, it doesn't even need to. Bob's pushing. Or they have to go for Baron. If Soaz was already a bot, this would be amazing. But since EG knows he's not, they're going to go for Baron. All five or four members, I should say, are here from Immortals. There's no smite coming up. Soaz cannot get there in time. And Immortals have just walked themselves in to a Baron up. Evil Geniuses. The taunt coming in. It's not going to hit anybody as Giyu looks to get his wings spread in this fight. Matt going to go down to the hands of Soaz as he's going to pop out of the death realm and look to get more kills onto Deathly. The pin cushion is being created. The Ren to come through. Deathly, will he pull the trigger early? and he doesn't even have the chance. So as still alive and the rest of the team baiting out evil geniuses as it's an ace for Immortals. We talked about it earlier. The early game may not be as strong for Immortals due to the changes, but a fight phase is something we're all used to where you can express your skill with the rest of your team. You catch the team, the opponents looking in another direction. Well, you take the sneak attack, and Immortals will go 5-3 and three on the Summer Split, now taking a win over Evil Geniuses.